けれどしけれどしけれど Oh, hope you're all having a great night. I was going to dress up a little bit more, but I decided that I'm not, and I'm just going to wear a shirt. That's new. <laughs> well, it's been a while since we did this.、Uh, probably less than a year, if not a year. But welcome back to it. No. This Saturday's Maplewood Funk Fest. Can't really wait for that. And I thought it would be awesome to do another live reading. Zessie suggested it to me by my spouse.、Uh, she wanted me to read a different book, so maybe next week I'll get into Divine Intercession if this goes well. If not, then, hey, I'm going to have a good time. I love doing these live readings, I love connecting with people, and honestly, I love this book.、Um, this was a part of the April Writing Challenge. I wrote this story up in a month, probably a little less than a month. I think it was like two weeks or so. Turned out to be about 40 pages or so. And I loved it. I loved the story. I loved writing it. I loved it from start to finish. It's fun. It's really fun. But as you can tell by the title, it is not safe for work. It is not safe for kids. It's something you could probably wear with some headphones and check it out. But. As far as you put the kids away, you know, I'm gonna start soon. You know, if your spouse is into some nasty stuff or if she's crazy, you might wanna go sit by yourself. If your boyfriend gets jealous too quick, you might wanna go sit somewhere by yourself or have the crazy ass join you for real. If you get a crazy boyfriend or crazy girlfriend, this is the perfect book for them. Be 100% honest with you. This story just kind of came to me, you know? It's, it's not inspired by anything specific. It is not based off a true story at all. I've never done this before. Thought about it. I've never done it before. So I'm going to give it a second. See what goes on. Because I, I would hate for someone to honestly want to check this out and honestly want to see it. And I'm like five minutes deep into it. I'm not going to wait too long. Because I'm going to be 100% honest. AEW is on tonight. And. I want to see AEW. I'm a huge pro wrestling fan. It's not about pro wrestling, though. It has nothing to do with pro wrestling.、Um, chilling, though. Chilling, chilling, chilling. I want to play. I don't want to play any music on YouTube because I fear that I might get、um, a dispute. I just had a dispute right before this video started. Okay. Also, sorry in advance for the audio because these headphones are good as shit.、Uh, a band aid? There's band aids upstairs. Say if you're a true professional, you can play to in the audience. So, I'm gonna get started. I'm about to get into this shit deep, 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 deep. Because I've been excited about this all week. I've been excited about it all day. And I'm ready to get ready. So, if you come in late or you don't come in at all, that's your loss, not mine, baby. Let's get it going. We're starting up in three, two, one. Rochelle had recently broken up with her boyfriend who paid most of the rent in their apartment. She found herself either facing returning to her parents' house in shame or staying with her best friend until she got on her feet. Previously, Rochelle had never got along with Edward because she felt her boyfriend was everything and would never leave her. A couple months ago, Rochelle first moved in, struggling to adjust to her new home and Edward's pressure. Before the relationship grew, this was a typical morning for them. Rochelle lay in bed as the clock neared 10 o'clock as Edward was leaving for work. He knocked on the door, expecting her to be up by now. Edward hit harder before opening the door. He found Rochelle half naked in her pink thong and a bra, storing with her butt high in the air. 
He gulped as he noticed her panties pulled aside, exposing her freshly saved vulva. He began to close the door, leaving it alone, but he knew he had to speak up. He felt like she was living around rent-free. Rochelle slept all day and either smoked weed or went out to drink all night. He thought she was dealing with some sort of depression. The cafe next door to his job was hiring baristas, and they made great tips with their premium coffee. Even if she only worked there for a few months, it would take off the burden financially from feeding three people and the, electri the extra electricity she used getting ready in the evenings. As Edward approached her shell, his dick was hardening like a rock, making it difficult to find his words. Hey, Rochelle, you, get, you gotta get up. Let's go. I'm taking you to a job interview. Edward bit his lip as he squeezed her butt, shaking her awake. Rochelle groaned, pulling a pillow over her head to ignore him. He couldn't help himself, getting a better grip of her booty and then even rubbing her clitoris with his ring finger. Rochelle moaned, moving the pillow and arching her back more as her dream was getting rougher. Edward tiptoed over to the door, closing it before spreading her legs more, beginning to look at her pussy. While he thought she was lazy, he has always believed Rochelle to be one of the most beautiful women he's met. He enjoyed her taste and she cut her eyes, half open, pretending to be asleep as he ate her out. Rochelle reached between her legs, rubbing her clit in circles as he began licking her labia, penetrating her with his tongue. Rochelle's ex had never eaten her out before. She wanted to scream in pleasure but didn't want to scare him off to alert my or alert Monica. Rochelle bit her thumb, moaning into her pillow as he made her orgasm. Edward recalled quickly, realizing Rochelle was awake but hesitated to leave. Rochelle relaxed, shaking her booty in the air, inviting him back over. Edward kissed up her thighs, back to her vagina, peeling her butt apart with his hands as he pulls him, his dick out of his slacks. Rochelle bit her lip as she was penetrated, being stretched out by his giant dick. Rochelle covered her mouth, gasping from his thrust as he rushed to finish before he was late for work. Rochelle cooed as her best friend's man pulled out of her pussy. Their moments of eye contact solidified their bond. Rochelle smirked as she watched him walk away with his cream-covered dick swinging between his legs. She lay unable to move from the thrashing he gave her for the past minutes. There was nothing easy about convincing Edward to cheat on his beloved, but turning down Rochelle's offer seemed foolish. His alarm began going off, and he cursed, hopping off the bed. Wait, wait, what's wrong? It's okay, you can finish up. Rochelle reached for him. I have to get to work. I wanted to bring you to a job interview, but we'll try again tomorrow. I gotta go. Well, let me finish you up first. Rochelle scoots to the edge of the bed, pulling his waistband down and wrapping her mouth around his dick. I'm very proud of this. I need to hurry, Edward began until he saw his dick disappear halfway down Rochelle's throat until she pulls up away for air. I never imagined it such a big dick, Eddie. Rochelle wiped her mouth from saliva, eyeballing the meat in front of her face. I... I gotta go. He confirms. When do you get back home? Rochelle asks, wrapping her arms around his neck. Edward held her slim waist, running his hands over her between the frame, as if every inch of her was his now. Rochelle lay on her back, walking back between her legs as she rubbed herself in circles, wagging him closer. Edward let out a sigh, shaking his head and zipping his pants up making his way to the door. Rochelle hopped off the bed, rushing after him to the front door, trying to convince him to stay longer. You're half naked. Edward spun around in shock, looking for Monica. So get me back to my room. Rochelle whispers as she giggles, trying to jump in his arms. Dude. Cool, she got the bandage. Dude, you not having a job is your problem. You're going to make me late and make us all homeless. Edward snaps at her. Rochelle was taken back, never having been yelled at before by anyone but her father and ex-boyfriend. She held her chest and able to respond, Jesus fucking Christ, stop texting me. Rochelle was taken aback, never having been yelled at before by anyone but her father and ex-boyfriend. She held her chest and able to respond as she stepped back. Edward pulled her closer, hugging Rochelle and kissing her forehead as he went with Monica when she got upset. Rochelle looked up, kissing Edward deeply, her tongue moving into his mouth. She held him as if she never wanted to let him go. She never understood what Monica was with him. Now, she wanted him for herself. I gotta go to work, alright? Okay, baby, I understood. 
Rochelle whined, letting his hand go, her lip whimpering as the door closed behind him. Rochelle let out a sigh, wondering what the hell she was going to do, wide awake hours before her usual wake-up time. She did what came naturally and headed back to her room to pack a bowl, then went up to the balcony to smoke. She enjoyed the high-rise view, viewing the city skyline as people surfed below. Her last apartment felt run down compared to the beautiful metropo metropolitan unit her best friend lived in with her long-term boyfriend. Everything she criticized about Monica's life seemed like a dream, especially her boyfriend who they were going to have to share if Rochelle was going to stay. The entire time she thought about the hours until Edward returned, driving her crazy. Who the hell did he think he was, waltzing in her room and doing whatever he wanted? Hey, what's good, girl? You're up early. Monica cheered as she opened the sliding glass door to the balcony. Rochelle began coughing on the smoke as Monica's presence took her off guard. What was she going to say? Hey, Mel, are you going to join me? Oh yeah, if you're Sharon, I'm off to I'm off work today, so that we can chill for once. I wanted to head over to the beach, maybe grab some drinks. Eddie doesn't mind you partying without him? Since when do you call him Eddie? Monica giggled as she accepted the bowl from Rochelle. I guess I had a change of heart how, how with how hospitable he's been since I've been here. He's been so sweet and pleasurable. I want I want to be nicer to him. What do you mean pleasurable? I thought you two hated each other. Monica asked, confused the more Rochelle spoke. I don't know what I meant. Rochelle blushes, biting her thumb, staring off as she replayed her wake-up call in, in her mind and how great it felt. Well, you found a new boyfriend last night. Did you have fun? Oh, I didn't meet. I mean, I met a new guy. He and I hit it off, but he has a girlfriend, so... I don't know what I got myself in. Scandalous. How was the sex? What? I mean, you look like you've been having sex all night. Monica extends the bowl back to Rochelle. Oh, wow. I, um... Well, it wasn't as eventful as you might think. You didn't hear us, did you? Hear you and a new man? No. I didn't even know there was anyone else here. Monica rubbed her chin. Good. I was trying hard not to wake you. I didn't think Eddie would be happy if we were having sex with another man. Why would Ed care what you were doing? He would probably be happy to hear you found a new boyfriend to move in with, and I haven't heard the end of you getting a job. I'm glad you're patient with him. Every night he talks about how you need a job. He thinks you're depressed or needs some fulfillment. Well, he was giving me some fulfillment earlier, Rochelle muttered. Rochelle looked up to find Monica waiting for her to continue her sentence, curious what came next. Monica looked so happy her boyfriend and best friend were finally getting along. Last night, she spent an hour in bed with Edward discussing how Rochelle needed to pull her weight. Monica can't remember a single time the two got along, but they had a different relationship when she wasn't around. He was telling me he wants to take me to a job interview, but he left before I can get ready. He said he was running late. He was on time when he kissed me goodbye. Monica cut her eyes. Well, you know how hard it is to wake me up. Yeah, but it's not appropriate when you come into your room while you're asleep. Especially if you were dressed like you are now. How long were you two talking? I mean, girl, we weren't talking. I mean, he wanted to wake me up. I, he told me about the job interview, then said, I'll try again tomorrow. I think maybe I'll take you to the job interview. You probably freaked him out in this outfit. His family is super conservative. No, no, it's okay. Rochelle held her chest, feeling panic at the idea of Monica interfering. What's wrong? Nothing, nothing. I'm just getting closer to Ed. So I appreciated him trying to help me. I have been depressed. He understands my needs. Monica wiped the sweat from her brow as she tried keeping the memory to herself. You're hiding something, Monica grins. I'm not. We have a platonic relationship. I think you should let me and Eddie worry about us. You focus on your relationship with him, okay? Rochelle takes a deep breath, holding her chest, feeling as if she got away. If I leave you and Eddie alone, you will probably rip each other's throats out. Well, maybe leave us alone tonight when he gets off work. Take yourself out to enjoy yourself and see if we burn the apartment down. Hmm. Now why would you want that? I don't know why you're looking at me like I did something. You look so guilty, <laughs> Monica breaks out laughing. Rochelle rolled her eyes. You think we'll fight the entire time without you? I want you two to get along. 
You've been my friend since high school, and I love Edward. He's everything I ever wanted in a man. The entire time I've known you two, I've wanted you two to get along, so hopefully, while you're here, you two can figure it out. I think we might have figured things out. Do you mind how long I stay? Monica took a deep breath, looking up, pr praying her, praying under her breath for her help answering why. Jesus Christ. What are you doing down here? Go. What? Go upstairs. Go. Go. I'll see you later. Uh, you see why we put the kids away for this one? Yeah. <laughs> That's my baby boy, though. Find my space again. That's the crazy thing, right? I do have to do a blog tomorrow about distractions and how to keep your focus when you're working. I was already scheduled before that, though, but I felt like something was going to pop out during this event. Whew. Monica's taking a deep breath, so I'm going to take a deep breath. Whew. Okay. Monica took a deep breath, looking up and praying under her breath for help, for help answering her question. Okay, so you're my girl, so I'm going to be transparent. Edward wants you to either pay rent or go back home to your parents. We both got new jobs, but he's been making a lot of investments. We have a lot in savings, but we don't have the income to take care of a third person. Especially with you asking for money to drink or get high every other day. You're a full room person who should be taking care of yourself. Well, Michael did everything. No one told you to drop out of college to become a sugar baby. Michael's frickin' 40 with two kids. He pees zero shots for because he thinks it makes him smart. He's a jerk. Rachel rolled her eyes. We can't all be you, though. I'm not asking you to be anyone but yourself. I am asking you to take care of yourself. Look, I said I would take you to the job interview. Let's, over to the, let's head over to the beach and get you some applications to fill out while we have brunch. I mean, I have liquor money. I don't have brunch money. I got you, girl. I want to see you succeed and get out of the situation. I feel like it's a pretty good situation. I have you too. You have me. I don't know if Edward feels comfortable with you here. If you get a job, we'll help you get a new apartment. Then you can have your life back. You're not asking me what I want. I like living with you too. And I like Eddie as well. How about you seriously take the night off for yourself? Go get a massage and I'll talk to him myself. Rachel crosses her arms over her chest. I'll be honest as well. I don't feel comfortable with you living with us. Monica lets out a sigh. Oh, it's like that? And I... I don't... You know... Have sex? Why wouldn't you have sex with him? He's terrific. What? Huh? <laughs> Sorry. I'm not a professional actor. I'm just human. I should tell you something. Let me rewind that back a little bit more serious with the this is this is serious 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 serious. This is serious. <sighs> and I feel like at heart we're all just five year old children. <laughs> I'll be honest as well. I'm sorry, in character. I'll be honest as well. I don't feel comfortable with you living with us. Monica lets out a sigh. Oh, it's like that? And I don't you know. Have sex? Why would you have sex with him? He's terrific. What? Huh? What are you talking about, Rochelle? How would you know that? I mean, I don't, really. I'm just saying he seems like he'll be good at sex. What are you telling me? Monica cut her eyes at Rochelle. Rochelle covered her face, taking a deep breath. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm shocked you two aren't having sex. The two of you live here alone. I want to be with all of you for them. Well... I'm gonna wait until marriage with him. Is he weird? You think he's cheating on me? What? Michelle, hold your chest. I mean, before me, he had some other girlfriends. He was dating a few girls. But I told him he had to stop that shit if he wanted to date. If you wanted me to date him or move in. He seems miserable. Well, you can't keep sucks from him, Monica. I'll tell you exactly as I told him. My name is Mel, not Ho. If he wants my cookie, he needs to put a ring on it. 
Rochelle bit her lip to keep quiet. What? You disagree? Edward is a handsome guy, and I think if you want to keep him, you might want to give your man some sex. If he's not having sex with you, then he's going to be doing it with someone else. He's a man. He needs sex. We don't. They do. Rochelle takes a deep breath, holding her head. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but one of us has a man, and the other one lost hers. Maybe if he held out a Michael, things would have happened, things would have happened differently. When I stopped having sex with Michael, he cursed me out and kicked me out of his house in the middle of the night in a drunken rage. I cried in the rain in my panties until an Uber picked me up, and the driver laughed as Michael threw my things out the window into the rain, asking me if he minded if he took pictures of me. I'm... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to bring that up. I'm trying to teach you something. I know you, I know you think my life is fucked up, but I know what I'm talking about, Monica. You need to give your man some sex because he needs it. I don't know. His dick is so big, it looks like it'll be painful. It feels good, trust me. What? Sex? Sex feels good. Trust me. Monica rolls her eyes. I could help you, and we could do it together. Rochelle offers. Ew, gross, I'm not gay, I'm not attracted to you at all. Besides, you better not have sex with Edward. Why? What do you mean, why? He's my boyfriend. I'm already worried about him cheating on me. Are you going to be the one? I don't know what I would do. Monica clenched her fist, her smile fading all together. Okay. Rochelle sighs, bouncing her leg. You're attracted to Edward? I mean, who wouldn't be attracted to him? As you said, he doesn't like me. And I should find my place as soon as possible. I wanted to keep our family together. Rochelle stands up, wiping her eyes as if she had sand of them. Rochelle rushed off without another word, keeping herself together until she got to her room. Serious. Locking the door and crying into her pillow. She muffled her cries, trying to forget this morning of wanting to forget how she enjoyed the sex. Rochelle hoped Monica had an inkling of open-mindedness, but instead felt drowning in guilt. The prospect of getting kicked out again terrified her to no one. As guilty as she thought, her vagina burned longing for him. Still wishing he gave up work to lay with her. Hey, Rochelle, are you alright? Monica knocked on the door, surprised when the door was locked. I'm good. Rochelle calls back in her reverse voice whenever her parent to Michael asks why she lo she's locked up in the bathroom or her bedroom. Are you sure? I'll be fine. Enjoy your day. Rochelle calls back, already breaking down more weed, opening her bedroom window and sitting on her bed, hyperventilating through the blood smoke. Rochelle, can you please tell me what I said that upset you? You didn't say anything, I just want to be alone. Rochelle, we're supposed to get job applications. I'm going to go with Edward tomorrow. Rochelle, imagine how worse she felt if left alone with Edward again. Rochelle reluctantly opened the door, letting Monica inside. Oh, come on, you're just going to smoke weed all day again? Then you're going to want to buy more as soon as you're out. I gave you 40 bucks, that was supposed to last you. Monica, you're not my fucking mom. Back off, all right? And Rochelle snaps, immediately covering her mouth. Monica paused, biting her lip, hearing something similar from Edward not long ago. All she wanted was for her best friend. All she wanted was what was best for her friend, but it felt like a lost cause. Monica frowned, feeling the awkward silence as neither of them moved or spoke. She knew Rochelle was hiding something that seemed to be eating her alive, but didn't know what. I'm gonna go out. Make yourself feel at home. Monica sucks in her lips as they tremble between her teeth, trying her best not to fall apart, feeling her friendship slipping away. Thank you, Monica. Rochelle chokes in the smoke in her sobs, her shoulders sunk as she put out her blunt. Rochelle, you know you can tell me anything, right? I do like Edward. A lot, a lot, Rochelle confesses. How much? I want to have sex with him. Can you not? I'm going to have sex with him. Rochelle covers her eyes. Please don't. I had sex with him. I told he was late for work. I've been flirting with him every day so he would let me stay. I need a way for him to let me stay so I let him have sex with me this morning. No, no, not that. You too. Monica lets out a shriek, 
falling to her knees, holding her chest as tight as she tried to process what she was hearing. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I'm going to do it again tonight. Please do it with me. Russell tried wiping her eyes, hoping Monica would agree. No. No, you're getting the fuck out of my house. Please, no, you can't. Yes, I fucking can, and I fucking will get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> Serious. Sorry. <laughs> I, need to, I need to set this is like... didn't even really have sex. I wanted to see your reaction. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Rochelle clapped, cried, pleading with her on her knees as she did with Michael. Monica glared at Rochelle like she lost her mind. Monica didn't say another word. She looked at her friend who she once viewed as the figure of confidence and self-love groveling. A single sentence away from being tossed into the streets or to go back home. Monica clenched the power in her fist and walked out of Rochelle's room, slamming the door shut. Rochelle waited until she heard Monica go into her bedroom before screaming into her pillow. She was pissed at herself for telling Monica. There was no way Monica will ever trust her again. She'd probably ruin the relationship. Rochelle lit her blunt, thinking they had over in the head with a smirk. If she was withholding sex, and she was willing to give him anything he wanted, then his decision would be simple. Working as a bartender and staying in this lovely beachfront apartment was paradise. When Amber got home, there was going to be even more drama. Rochelle was able to inhale before her doors kicked open. Rochelle choked on the smoke as Monica grabbed her by the arm and dragged her out of the room. Monica, what the hell are you doing? Rochelle rips away from her grip. Get some, grab some fucking sweatpants and get your skank ass on. We're going to end this job right now. We're going to get the truth. And if you fucked my man, I'm going to get a ticket home before I kill you, Monica shouts. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me at least brush my teeth. You need to relax. I only wanted to see your reaction. Stop talking, Rochelle. Monica, please listen. I thought since you're not having sex with him, don't say it. I swear to God, do not say it. I want to help you. You can help by getting a fucking job, not by fucking my boyfriend. I mean, you both go to work, and he's going to want kids. I figured we could be a family, and I could take care of your kids. Why do you play power couple? So you get to get so you get to get high enough sex with my man while I work all day. I didn't know I was bothering you so much. I haven't had sex with Edward the entire time I've been here. Today was the first day he ever remotely showed a sign and helped me get and helped me with a job interview. You weren't bothering me until you. Sorry, hold on. You weren't bothering me until you brought up having sex with that man. So get your ass ready and let's go. You're sitting in the back. I don't even want to look at you two right now. Monica, please relax. We could end up with him we could end up losing him in his job. Let's wait until he gets home. No. Because if it turns out you didn't fuck him, then you go into that job interview. You two can go straight to work and straight the fuck back home. He gets home at the exact same time every single day. The first day you two are late. You're taking the bus back home, Monica warns. Bullshit, you're not my fucking mother and you're not my goddamn boss of me. This is his life. This is his house and hold the side. Rochelle fired back. Monica gasped, wanting to smack the plaque out of Rochelle's mouth to save time brushing her teeth. Rochelle stood her, gla gr her ground. If we haven't had sex, I want an apology. If we need to freaking relax and get off my case, you're getting a job. Fine, I don't care, I'll get a job, but you're gonna be sorry. All right, hurry up and get your ass moving. Monica rolled her eyes, leaving Rochelle to get dressed. Rochelle immediately ducked into her bi private bathroom, grabbing her phone and texting Edward. Dude, she knows. I told her by accident. We're on the way to you na now. Lie. Lie. Rochelle was quick, then deleted the message. Rochelle brushed her teeth and beat her face until it needs to put on makeup, until she was ready for an interview. Her hair fell into natural curves. She removed her scarf, fluffing up her hair. She removed her scarf, or her head scarf, fluffing up her hair before getting dressed. She wore a navy blue skirt with a matching blazer and a cute scarf. It's a different type of scarf. Meeting Monica in the kitchen, still, I should probably wear her hair scarf. <laughs> an added version of that two years from now. Meeting Monica in the kitchen, still dressed in her pajamas, because Monica don't give a fuck right now. Let's go, Monica said, unfazed, pulling her along. Rochelle shrugged, confident in her plan. 
They walked to the carport and drove downtown to the real estate office. Albert became a partner. Monica, par Monica parked in front of a cafe a few buildings down the artisanal style of village. It was a beautiful spring day with many people sitting outside drinking wine. Parents played with their children in the park across the street. Monica rushed out of the car, pointing to the cafe. You go in there and tell them you're here for a job. I'll be back, Monica demanded as she marched up the street in her slippers and nightgown and slick robe, silk robe. Rochelle gritted her teeth with her message left on, on unread. She had no way of knowing what he would tell her or if he would blame it all on her. What if he lied about it and had her sent away anyway? Could he have set her up knowing Monica would take his side? Rochelle was filled with panic as she watched Monica disappear inside the office building shared by a few other offices. Rochelle sulked, sulked into the coffee shop telling the cashier she needed an application. Filling it out in hopes he enjoyed himself enough to want more later on. The process felt meaningless as if every rude bump she tried to quit and run to the office to save her skin, though she would only be proving them right about her if she made an excuse to leave. She didn't come to be a home wrecker. If all she needed was a job, she was close enough to enjoy him or her lunch breaks and then eat when she got when they got home or vice versa. Rochelle let out a deep exhale as she as she finished her first job application since her freshman year of college five years ago. She felt proud and the cafe was beautiful, beautifully decorated with a stage for a local and independent artist to perform. As she turned in her application, she found out the cafe also had its liquor license. The cafe blends fair trade rustic brewed coffee with fine Maker's Mark, Crown Royal, or Ciroc smoothies. When Edward thought of this place, he must have understood it at a deeper level than she knew. Rochelle sipped on an Irish cream hot latte and nibbling, on, and nibbling on a giant chocolate cookie, enjoying her new sanctuary. Monica had gotten Edward while he was meeting with a client. She sat with her legs bouncing in the waiting room as Edward hurried along the young couple, looking into buying their starter home. He gave them a list of leads, advising they call him back in a few days to tour their favorite properties. Edward walked them outside, and outside the door, then, to, then turned around to confront Monica. Edward gritted his teeth as he found the words to deal with his fiancée. <sighs> what brings you here, Monica? And your underwear? Did you fuck Rochelle? Can we get him in my office so we don't ruin my business? It's a yes or no question. No. We could have had sex, but no. We didn't do anything. She's dressed, well, a bit like you are now. Edward says flat out, approaching Monica, licking his lips. Monica backed up, falling against his desk as Edward lifts her legs, pulling her panties to the side. Edward kissed her neck and forehead before their lips met. Monica re relaxed to his touch, leaning back on his desk with her, licks, with her legs spread before him as he released himself from his pants. Monica heard Rochelle's advice in her ear, biting her biting her hand as Edward slapped the head of his penis against her pussy lips. Monica marveled at the size as she tried letting him slide, slide inside. Monica choked on her moans, adjusting to the pain of being stretched wide open, but Edward moved as if they were two step into the oldies. Monica wrapped her arms around his neck, shuddering as he began sliding in and out of her with ease. Monica couldn't believe how her skin felt alive. She felt every pore and cell in her body as he held her hips, slamming into her guts. Monica covered her mouth in shock, watching him ease deeper until their hips bent. Monica began screaming suddenly until her voice went silent. Edward grabbed her throat, choking her as he beat up her walls with fast, hard thrust. Monica's tongue fell from her mouth as she bounced against her lover's waist, feeling the pure euphoria of rushing through her fingers and curled toes as she climaxed for the first time in her life. Edward pulled out of Monica, allowing her to stroke his seat onto her belly as he finished. To his surprise, Monica guided him back inside of her as he, she, <laughs> as he came. She was wrapping her legs around him as he picked up the pace, returning to pound Monica, holding down her waist until he fell back into his chair. You been waiting for some pussy, baby? Monica asked, sliding into his lap, kissing him deeply as he struggled to catch his breath. What came over you? Rochelle told me I should sleep with you. She seemed to be right. Monica fanned herself, feeling completely inhibited. This was Rochelle's idea? He asked, shocked. 
Well, she made this awful joke about having sex with you, and that pissed me off. I was gonna come down here and scream at you. I saw that couple and how happy they looked. Then, the way you were touching me, I guess it was my idea. Monica giggled, blushing red. Is this how you expected to lose your virginity? And we were worried about her answer? It was better. It's so hot having sex in your office. It felt so dirty. I'm gonna give you some more loving when you get home. I'm gonna take Rochelle out for drinks. I have to apologize. Can I also get some cash for some marijuana? Monica giggles. You don't have to call it marijuana. Everett laughs, taking out his billfold. Monica reaches in his wallet reaches in his wallet to his surprise, fanning through his hundred dollar bills, licking her lips as she picked off a few Crips hundreds, then bowed her head. Edward nodded, giving her another couple before lifting her back on the desk, entering her again. Monica held his wallet, counting his pocket chains as she reached her second orgasm, though she was unsure if it was from him or his wallet that made her so excited. Ed, this isn't your bedroom. There was a knock on the door, and both looked up to find his business partner and mentor, Angela, whose father founded the company 40 years ago. Shit, Angie. Edward pulled out of Monica, covering up, up in his shoe jacket for putting his cock away. What the fuck is going on here? I hope you close that deal on that couple to be celebrating right now. Monica, nice to see you again. Angela said in a wise tone, moving over the two, standing six feet in her heels. It's nearly closed for sure. We're finalizing the details, but they're good to go. One more visit to the last shop should have to review the details. I was I was just getting a visit from my fiance. Ever explained. Hmm. I see. Quite a visit. Ah, <sighs> reminded me of our last business trip when you two were arguing. Angela smiled before leaving them to clean up. What did she mean by that? Nothing. You, have you had sex with Angela too? That was years ago, Edward brushed it off. Do you have sex with Rochelle? No, Edward groomed. Okay. I guess I'll see you at home. Monica sighed as Edward began walking her to the door. Have a good day, Monica. I'll take care of him once you're gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is the first talking. Have a good day, Monica. I'll take care of him once you're gone. You give me a great team building exercise for the day. Angela smiled, waving over Ed waving over Edward's shoulder as Monica left. Monica cut her eyes at Angela. If you touch my man, I'll burn your fucking office down, bitch. You better watch yourself. Angela's smug smile faded away as she looked away from Monica. Angela studied Monica's intensity before giving Edward some space while she found something that busy herself with in her office. Monica then glared at Edward, letting him know it was only a glance what she would do if she found out they had sex again. Angela was nearly twice their age, but still a beautiful, professional old woman. Monica swore Angela wanted Edward for herself at the very beginning of their relationship, and Edward constantly assured her he wasn't interested. He wasn't interested, but she was. <laughs> Obviously. Edward wanted her to know the truth, but wasn't sure how to tell her the situation. Monica ignored Angela for the past part, for the most part in the cafe, to find Rochelle behind the counter wearing a purple visor and a matching apron. Hello, ma'am. May I help you? Rochelle Beam is bouncing up and down as she sees Monica. Oh my god, you got the job so soon? They love me, and I love it here. I can live here, girl. Rochelle spins around before running around and hugging Monica. I'm so proud of you, and I forgive you for whatever happened with Ed. Your advice worked out. What advice? We did it. What? In his office? No way, that's so hot. Rochelle whispered under her breath, I feel incredible right now. My entire body feels lighter. I can't wait to go home and take a nap. I might even smoke some of your buds. What is mine is yours. Rochelle's lips curled into a grin as she imagined she would ever have the same opportunity. Hmm, maybe. So what's good here? I see they're mixing liquor with coffee? I never heard of that before now. I had an Irish cream latte earlier. I think you would like a Ciroc fruit smoothie, but then again, you're driving. How long are you going to be here today? I'm doing a trail for an hour and then I'm free to go. I've only been here for about 30 minutes, so in another 30 minutes I'll be out. Can you drive? Rochelle smiles. One wild berry Ciroc smoothie coming right up, ma'am. 
Monica began to dance, holding up the five hundred dollars from Edward for Rochelle to see. He grinned ear to ear with plans. Rochelle punched in the order, then excused herself to watch how everything was made. Since soon, she'd have to take the orders and make the drinks so if they weren't busy. Monica stood aside, ignoring people staring at her in her pajamas in the middle of the afternoon. I wish she dressed the way she felt. She wanted to walk around naked and didn't. Care. She wanted to. <laughs> she wanted to walk around naked and didn't care who saw. Michelle delivered her drink, holding her apron and a, and a, and a hat in hand. Giddy, she tugs Monica along. I gotta go home because I wanted you out of the, out of here dressed like this and smelling like sex. Exact words verbatim from my manager. But she thought your outfit was cute. <laughs> she okay. I'm glad you got the job. Not Edward would be cool and you can get out of my house more. So... Where did two girls go with more money than they expected? Monica asked as she sipped her fruit smoothie, soon feeling a buzz after a few gulps. Monica stopped walking for a moment, smiling as she looked at her cup and gleamed. I don't mind heading home for a while. I could use a nap, Rochelle yawned. Fine, then I'll drop you off at home. I'll pick up, then I'm going shopping. You're gonna go without me? Oh, well, he's my boyfriend, that's my money. I would take you, but you want a nap. I want to get out of the house. It's my day off. I'm back at work for the next four days straight. I want to enjoy it. I want to enjoy myself. Fine. I can nap later, but you need to put on some clothes. Says who? <laughs> I never felt like that after sex. I would must have given you some act right. Rochelle sneers as she puts the key into the ignition. Girl, I feel like a brand new person. I feel like I'm one Olympic medal. I never imagined sex felt so good. Every other girl complains or acts like they'll no take it. Now I understand why he tries brushing up on me while we sleep. I'm not trying to brag. Monica covers her mouth. No, no, I know what you mean. Rochelle blushes, thinking about it earlier and kissing him goodbye. They pulled up in the carport a few minutes later with a brand new attitude. Rochelle was a bit weary, knowing the high before the low with an orgasm. She was free for now, but how things would be when she was around Edward again. Worse. How is Rochelle going to resist herself if she's ever left alone with him again? Things are so much easier when they were enemies. Rochelle ponders on the idea of Eddie technically cheating on her best friend. He jumped all over her. It's not like she asked him to do it. It's like they hardly did anything at all. If it was true, why didn't she stop him when she had the chance? Why is her body crying for it more, mo more Monica spent the car ride talking about her first time? You're gonna grab a shower and get changed. Do you want to take a quick nap? I'll run and get my hands and feet done. You're gonna do a mani petty without me? That's our thing. I can sleep in the chair. Rochelle, you suggest that I go spend some time by myself. Ever told me you two didn't do anything. I trust you too. So he'll be home in a couple of hours and you want to sleep. I figured I should take you up in your offer. Rochelle frowned at the idea of being alone with Edward when Edward came home. She swallowed her spit, thinking about her response, but felt guilt crawl through her body. Rochelle was shocked he didn't say anything, which meant he was expecting more. As Monica smiled, skipping off to her bedroom, Michelle held her chest, shuffling her feet to the couch in the TV area of the front room and joined to the kitchen's entrance. Rochelle wiped tears from her eyes, feeling trapped. Her mind thought back to her life with Michael. Probably gonna get finished up soon. Um, I'm almost halfway through. We may not make it till Friday with this. She cleaned his house all day after the wild party she threw. She was expect she expected to have sex whenever he clapped his hands. If one of his friends wanted to have sex with her, she had no choice but to comply. And she couldn't leave, work, or be sober. The very moment she was sober, she cried, and all the training Michael spent trying to condition her would fade away. It was a life she never wanted to return and refused to see again. Before she knew it, Rochelle had woken up from her snoring on the couch, feeling a cold salt sweat over her body from the continued withdrawal. She was too afraid to speak to, to, to speak to uh, no. She was too afraid to speak about Monica. With Monica. Jeez, you can catch your small mistakes after the fact. She found herself wrapped in a blanket with a pillow, a cup of tea and a few cookies sat on the coffee table in front of her with SpongeBob on. What the hell is this shit? Rochelle muttered as she sat up, picking up the tea and taking a sip with a refreshed smack of her lips. You alright? 
Edward asked as he came out wearing a pair of basketball shorts and a t-shirt instead of the suit the suit he was always around in I well I don't know I'm just thankful Monica left this for me so Monica is gone because she took the money and went shopping again she's been gone for a few hours it seems because you were knocked out when I got back I promise you I didn't touch your anything again I gave you the pillow and laid you down I'm sorry about this morning you did this for me? These cookies are delicious. What brand are these? Rochelle was shocked that she ate one of the cookies. Ah, I made them, Edward said. Did Monica ask you about us? I lied there because I felt so embarrassed. I wanted to tell her how I felt, but... I guess she showed her. She told me you never had sex before today. I guess me and her have that in common now. Rochelle bit her lip, making room for me on the couch. I felt guilty all day, but you summed it up perfectly. I tried to play Mr. Pear for her, but it's exhausting, expensive, there's no fucking sex. Well, I guess you two solved that problem. He shrugged. What? Look, it's nothing I should talk about with you. I gotta get to the gym. Did she know what she was doing for the first time? Or were you thinking about me? We could work out real quick. Rochelle lifted her dress, revealing she had an orange panties today. How did you know I was thinking about you? Edward looked shocked, rubbing his temples. She's a virgin. There's no way she could have pleased a man. Come here, I'll finish you up. Rochelle made her decision by extending her hands. You can't tell her we're doing this, Rochelle. Ah, uh, I think I'm honestly gonna leave it at there for the night, because this has gone on. I could do it another 15 minutes or no. <laughs> you're upstairs, <laughs> you're upstairs listening to this with my parents. That's crazy. Oh, you probably have headphones in or something. That's it for tonight. Um, I'll be back uh, tomorrow night or Friday. I only have like half a chapter. Like, we're halfway through the story right now. Honestly, this is like 17 pages in. I'm stopping where it gets spicy, spicy, spicy. For whoever might check it out tomorrow and continue this another time. And then I'll be off to reading a new story. So that is it for the night. Thank you all. God bless. Be well. And I hope you enjoyed it.